Hi, this is Brian London, and you're watching Market One Minute. I'm here today with my good friend Brent Cook. Brent, welcome. Glad to be here again. Everybody's talking about peak gold these days. Why is peak gold different than, say, the peak oil theory that has been widely discredited at this point? That's a good point. I think peak gold is a, is a bad term to use. What we're really seeing here is peak production in gold. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that we're running out of gold. We're not running out of gold. What we're running out of is economically profitable gold deposits. And that's a big difference. There's no technology that's going to come in like fracking and such that's going to change how much it's going to cost to mine an ounce of gold. So the point really isn't so much, there, peak gold, fine. If gold goes to $3,000 an ounce, there'll be plenty of gold. Assuming the, the input prices don't rise in tandem. Right, like they did good last point, time. good point. But no, what really is, what is really happening is that, you know, we were really successful in finding new deposits back around, and it peaked around 1995. Right. Since then, discoveries have been going down, and they've been going down for a lot of reasons, in that basically we've looked, you know, in 95, and that era. We creamed off the easy discovery. Yeah, that's yes. when the rest of the world opened right. up. You could go in and walk on the deposit and see it and drill it yeah. off. And now we're having to use all these esoteric methods, looking mm -hmm. beneath hundreds of meters of barren rock. So it's so much more expensive to find those things. And having to use technology to extract lower, ever lower grades of, of ore. Right, but now right. that they're deeper, it's more expensive. your capex to get to it's more, and generally your metallurgy is much more difficult. Mm -hmm. And so your technical studies take more time, your trade-offs take, take more time, and then you've got to deal always more and more with the environmental and social issues, yeah. plus the political situation. And people talk about discoveries and get all excited about a discovery, but there's uh, people don't really realize often that it takes 20 years sometimes for those deposits to actually get brought into production, to actually get metal produced out of the ground. Exactly. Right now, for a large deposit, it's taking from discovery to production 20 years. So mm -hmm. what we're finding today, if it's a big deposit, right. probably won't come into production for 15 to 20 years. And they're in the story that if, if discoveries peaked in 1995, the production from those discoveries, roughly speaking, is peaking right about now. Right. So we've got about a 40 to 50 million an ounce uh, gold deficit from what we're finding, from what we're producing. We had that last year too. We're going to have it next year, even more so. So we're, it's getting really, it's going to get really fun. And you know what's really interesting is that we're producing roughly around 3,000 tons a year of gold uh, from new mine production. China alone, if you believe the withdrawal figures from the Shanghai Gold Exchange, is withdrawing, is taking out of the market somewhere between 2,100 to this year on pace for something more like 2,500 tons of gold out of the market. So that one country is absorbing the vast majority of newly mined gold. If you add India to the equation, it's more than all the newly mined gold is going to just two countries. I wonder why they're accumulating that gold, Brian. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's the whole thing. The gold follows historically for thousands of years. Gold has followed the flow of economic power. So it's, it's, it's not only an analogy, it's, you know, it's yeah. what's happening. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's really, a, it's something you talk about a lot. It's like sort of a wake-up call to Western right. world is the, what are these guys up to? Where are they going? Yeah, and what's the plan? And they're certainly not talking about it, but you know that, well, we were talking about this the other night, that the price of gold is set in the Western markets by Western speculators, but demand is set in the East. And they're, they're just happy as can be that we're pricing gold this low, they're buying it on sale. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So where do we go from here? Do you, uh, you know, we have a standing bet at the beginning of every year whether the gold price is going to end up higher or lower than it began the year. And so far, I've uh, shipped you a couple bottles. Actually, I still owe you for losing last year's bet. You've gotten some, some whiskey out of me. Much, I mean, much I've obliged. lost this bet two years in a row. Yeah. And we're on again this year, correctly? Correct? I'll go for it, yeah. Okay. I, I, no, I suspect... You already went for it. Let's not yeah, go I, for it. No, you just, already went for it. You're my chances in. of winning are less this year, I think. But uh, yeah. you know what I am seeing and, and is that, you know, in the junior market, we've been bouncing along bottom now for a couple of years. Right. And I've always been pretty negative on what it looks like. I noticed that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think we're starting, starting to see 
the very hint that things are going to start getting better. Yeah. So you actually think the juniors are going to end up better off the, at the end of this year than they started? I think the, the good ones are, yeah. I think mm -hmm. what I'm hoping is that all the crap falls away. Right. And that we can really start focusing on the few, you know, the 10 or 15 percent of the companies on the venture right. exchange that are actually competently run, that know what they're looking for, and are capable of finding a deposit that's going to fill that deficit that next year and the year after, the major mining companies are going to wake up and go, uh, I just called the geology department, we don't have one, and we're running out of ore, what do we do? They buy those deposits. That's that's my game plan. That's what you do, and, you, and your negativity uh, is actually a great advantage. You don't like a lot of companies, a lot of projects, a lot of deposits, you're really very tough in your analysis. But because of that, in this downturn in the market, you're one of the few newsletter writers out there, editors out there, who actually has a, a positive track record. Yeah, we were up last year 19%, and this year we're up as well. I mean, it's not yeah. fantastic. But you know what's interesting about this bottom forming and its capitulation is that the problem is that we all, myself, my mm -hmm. subscribers, and, and you as well, mm -hmm. we own these stocks that we've held for five years or more years. That's where you started. Every yeah. year they just lower and lower and lower. And that's yeah. such a depressing thing that when I introduce a new idea, a lot of the subscribers, I think, are not taking up They're on that. They're not participating, right. Because it's, it's the whole psychology. And I'm seeing people start to drop off. Mm -hmm. And that's another sign of the bottom. It's just one by one we're seeing capitulation. But you know, as an aside to that, one of the things uh, I'm finding at my conference in the fall and, and, and last fall, and I think you saw that as well, we're really down to the hard core of really smart resource investors. You know, that at my event, they were walking around, they were looking at companies, talking and buying here and there because they know that this is a time that the real money is made at, at the bottoms of markets, the bottoms of cycles like this. And this is where you buy the, the companies that are going to be worth so much more at the top of the market. No, for sure. I mean, we've been through this. I noticed that at your New Orleans conference was that the people there have been through this. They recognize that when it's really bad, that's really when you've got to start buying. You need cash and courage at times like this. Both of them can't do one without the other. Well, Brent, thank you so much. It's, it's always a pleasure. We'll see who wins the bet this year. And Hopefully you uh, do. I hope we all both <laughs> hope. Just send me the bottle now. Thank you so much for being with us. You betcha. Thank you.